And good morning, church. I wish I was right at GBC this morning, but I'm at another location. And But I am glad to be with you via video and share a few things. Praise God. Isn't he wonderful? And isn't it good to be alive? You know, I want to talk to you of just a few moments today about overcoming obstacles. You think about this, son. Uh, I've been through a lot, and I'm not and shall never ask with sympathy. I just ask for your prayers, and I'm so appreciative of all the prayers, love, expressions of love, the gifts that each of you have been so kind to offer my benefit. And for Drew and Tiff also, thank you for standing with them, and thank you for standing with our church. I think about this, and so... Pastor, so what have you been to? What have you been through? What's what's the big deal? Why are you laid in bed? <laughs> it's not to catch up on my sleep, but I can tell you, listen to this. Here's an account of some of the days when I was in the hospital and where I'm at now. Normal surgery for what I had would have taken four hours. My surgery wound up taking eight to nine hours. I had four bypasses. I had two valves replaced. I had an ablation. Um, I had side effects from some of this. And actually, my the size, uh, you think about your aorta that it's the size of a garden hose. Mine, for the blood flow, was the size, get this, of a pinhead. I was a walking dead man. I was close to death. Not once, but twice. Twice the death of the door of death tried to open and pull me in. But glory to God, Jesus wouldn't open the door and let me go. And I'm glad today. I had a balloon pump. I had drainage tubes. I had an arterial line. I had heavy and many different medications. I was on a ventilator for 14 days, one day away from a trach that would be permanent, that I would never be able to talk normal again. I was sedated for healing for 14 days. I was restricted, tied to a bed for 14 days. And looking at this feeding tube over 14 days, 31 days in CTICU, and folks, I'm telling you, I had a double amputation. Well, above or below rather than me. 46 days in the hospital. Pastor, how did you get through this? That was only one way. I learned to trust in Jesus. And I learned to trust in God. I've been a Christian since the 2nd of February, 1975. I've never experienced anything like this. I pray you never even. But there are lessons to be learned. And I'm just taking a few moments to share with you because I want you and I will be back. When I get back in church, I will share more. But I want to share a few things with you today that I pray. So what do you do to overcome the obstacles in your life. Maybe yours is not physical. Yours can be relational, spiritual, physical, mentally. There's several ways this could happen. And not only looking and trying to find solutions, but realizing that there is a God who is there and cares. Listen, I could not have gotten through what I got through. I was a dead man even before I got on the operating table. God spared me. He spared me for a purpose. And part of that purpose is to minister to you and to win souls. I prayed with countless people. I've led three people to the Lord and I'm not through yet. But you know, I look at God's word. Let me see, I've got a scripture here. I want to try to read to you. 
and I pray it will be a blessing. I got, I got some, just three quick points. I'm not going to be long with it. I don't want to take away from Kenny's time, but there are three things that I want to share with you. I'm just going to sit back a moment. That's okay with you. One, you've got to trust in God today. You've got to trust in Him for your strength, and you've also got to trust in Him for your wisdom to deal with the obstacles. You can't fight your battles and win. You are not the solution. He is. And you've got to realize the scripture says, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. You can't get through this except by trusting God. Whatever you in, wherever you at, you can only get through. But one thing about it, God doesn't leave you nor forsake you. He not only brings you maybe to it, but he brings you through it. Secondly, today I want to share with you, you've got to know there is nothing too hard for God. Didn't Jeremiah say that? Hey, Lord God, there's nothing too hard for thee. What have you faced and you think? I can't get through it. You can't, but he can. I'm telling you, I cannot, cannot express the miracle power of what God has done for me. In this room that I'm in, I have a beautiful window, and I can see the beautiful blue sky and the sun shining. I can see God's hand at work. I can lay here and say, I was made by God, and I'm still alive. Don't never tell me there's no God. But my God is real. My God is mighty. And my God is powerful. Thank God. You know, the only way I can sit up in this bed, I've got two legs cut off. But below the knee is by the strength and the power of my God. And there's one final thought. I can share that with you. You've got to recognize that God will use your trial for a purpose. Use your trial for a purpose. What can come out of that? We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. He's got a purpose. And if you're going through, or if you go through, which you may, no promises in life. We're not promises sunshine and roses. Trials come. We face obstacles. But we don't face them alone. God is with you. As he has been and continues to be with me. I am a living, walking, testament example. And I can't help but boast on my God who has brought me through and not finished yet. I will be back at Gethsemane Baptist Church on that platform and preaching the Word of God with more fire, more intensity, with more passion, and more compassion than you've ever seen come out of this stuff. So, stay with me. Support your church. Support the leadership. Tom, Derek, Tiff, Drew, they are leading that church through my trial to the victory, the growth, and the blessing. You keep giving. You keep coming. Bring people with you. And guess what? I'm going to be preaching to you on uh, Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Not, not there physically, but I'll be there with you. I love you. And I want you to know I'm praying for you. May God bless you today. How about that? Amen. Amen. What an encouraging message this morning for our hearts. You know, God, God has the final say in all things, right? And to watch him, I thought he was going to jump out of that bed <laughs> at one point towards the camera, but very encouraging and spirit filled. And we thank you for that, Pastor. We know you're watching and uh, I know that everybody else watching got a blessing from that. We sure did in here too. But right now, oh, 
Tammy's like, wait a minute. <laughs> I need to, to do a little, wait, there he comes, Kenny Spruce. <laughs> is coming today to bless our hearts. I know Kenny has a message prepared for us. <laughs> Your wife did great too, Kenny. <laughs> Drug it out. Anyway, y'all glad to see Kenny? I am. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, y'all. I, uh, I've been up since I've been at work since three o'clock this morning, and got off at ten, and I've been drinking a lot of coffee. So if I just get up here and take off, you'll know. Okay. Well, good morning, church. I didn't hear you. You got to keep me awake, guys. You got to keep me awake, okay? Uh, I don't know how you follow that. I mean, everything he said, I'm going to pretty much be talking about, okay? So he's, we could rerun that again, and I can go sit down. Today we're going to, huh? <laughs> Today we're going to uh, talk about, is there a Goliath in your life that needs conquering? We'll be reading 1 Samuel 7, 13, 7, 3, 10. We call ourselves Christians because one blessed day we asked Jesus into our heart and our lives. He came in and washed our sins away. We accepted him and everything he stands for. He loves us. We love him. Because of this, we long to serve him. To grow closer to Jesus, our, fellows, our fellow Christians, brothers and sisters. We pray we come to church. We pray, we come to church, and we serve in many ways. Then one day, you'll hear the small voice call us by name, and God says, I want you to do a work for me. Well, it sounds like he's been calling Carlton and saying, hey, you know, i got a couple people I want you to talk about, talk to about me. They never knew me, so now they do. Did God whisper, I want you to teach or speak? Encourage, invite, smile, hug, or go to the far corners of the earth. We all want to want to do this, these things. So don't why don't we conquer the world for Jesus? Maybe because we have not conquered our Goliath that stands in our way and in, uh, in our victories. There's some fears that hold us back. The story of David and Goliath is one of the most widely known stories from the Old Testament. Nearly everyone is acquainted with the Bible story known that David, as a boy, not as a man, but as a boy, slew the giant Goliath. The story is an inspiring example of how the underdog can win against the odds. Defeat someone with such more experience, was a man of war, and was much, much bigger than he was. Let's read 1 Samuel 3.10. And the Philistines stood upon the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. That's around nine foot, nine inches. That's a tall guy. <laughs> you, you, if you ever look in the Guinness Book of World Records, look for the tallest man. He's 8 foot 11 inches. The tallest man now is 8 foot 2 inches. So that would give you an idea. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of maul, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, which had equaled to 100, around 156 pounds. And he had a greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, around 50 pounds. So, I mean, this is a whole lot of weight this guy's carrying. He's not a small man. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And the spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one barren, and one barren shield, one barren a shield went before him. I mean, if this guy's that big, big he don't need nobody in front of him. So this, uh, the shekel of iron weighed around 37, 38 pounds. 
His armor weighed around 244 pounds. That's not counting his, his uh, shield. That's not, that's not counting his sword. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come, why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants of, to Saul? Choose a man for, for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight me with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be servants and serve us. And the Philistine, Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we might fight together. Do you think the Israelites were afraid? I mean, you, you stand back in a crowd and you look at some of these guys and say, you go. No, you go. And all of them are going. I mean, Saul wants somebody to go. But nobody wanted to go. I wouldn't have wanted. It's okay to be afraid. What's not okay is letting fear stop us from getting to our victories. Let's look at a few more verses. The Israelites feared the Philistine giant because he seemed to be invincible. First Samuel, First Samuel seven eleven, when Saul and all the Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now all of them were scared, and I just want all of them afraid. Verse twenty four, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man flee from him. They were so afraid. Well, there it goes. It tells you they were afraid of this guy. Their fears like other, like fears like ours, also have been believing things that were never true. They believe their future depends solely on their own abilities, and they did not trust in God for their deliverance. Saul looked within his own ranks of the, their deliverance for the giant from the giant instead of looking to God. And when David showed up, here's a go run, come showing up, Saul did not believe David could win against the Philistine giant. Well, who would? I mean, here's a little runt, a little small guy, around 17 years old, skinny. He's a sheep herder. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even know how to use a sword. 1 Samuel 17, Samuel 17, 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth. He a man of war from his youth. David was given armor, spears, swords, and helmets. Saul believed that this was the only way to win. Hmm. And he wrong. Samuel 17, 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go. For he had not proven it. He hadn't tested these things. He didn't know what it was all about. I mean, he's a small guy. You go put 150 pounds of weight on him, and he probably didn't weigh 100 pounds. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proven them. And David put them off, put them off him. So he just threw him down. He wasn't going to use that. I'll show you a little thing. Dylan, can you come up here? <laughs> remember, I remember him when he was really little. Amen. Now we've got to find a little scrawny guy. Bronson, why don't you come up here? He's 17. Okay. Go back closer. He ain't going to hurt you. Now look at this difference. Now this might be even shorter. Yeah. He would might probably have to sit down on that. Yeah. So, I mean, look at this. Would you run up to this guy? Why not? Because look at him. 
Have y'all ever went to a, the Walmart and you seen somebody in there with one of these little bitty chihuahuas and it's going, no. that's the way I'm doing now. Because you used to be little. Thank y'all thank very much. Give him a hand. That's David and Goliath. Now, thing, thing, now things turn around. We can look at what David does and use those tools to conquer any giant that we come our way, including fear. David removed the armor that Saul thought would work to gather the, and to, would work, but instead he gathered the stones that God told him to use. And David looked at the Lord for his help. David prepared the way that God told him to, not as he wanted to, but as God wanted him to. First Samuel seventeen forty. And he took off his staff, he took his staff in his hand and chose five, him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. David went to the battle with confidence because he went to the battle with God as source of his strength. Amen. Maybe we should look at Look at why God, Goliath lost the battle and see if it's anything true in our lives. Goliath lost the battle because he didn't, he trusted himself. His confidence was his own abilities. But God's word says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. That's good words. Cause that's what Colton's doing now. He, he's trusting in the Lord. Here's a guy that could be saying, oh, I'm, I'm down, I'm out. But instead, he's trusting in the Lord. He's, the Lord is calling him, Colton, I've got to work for you. I'm going to bring you some people that don't know me, don't know my word, talk to him. And you see what happened? He talked to him. He did exactly what he was asked to do. He's not down and out. He's just getting started. Amen. And the biggest reason he lost was because he was on the wrong side. Goliath lost to the Lord. So why did David win? He won because he trusted in God, because he knew that he was beatable on his own. Because he was on God's side. That was the main thing. David won with the Lord. First Samuel seventeen forty six says, This day the Lord will deliver thee unto mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowl of the earth and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Wow, what confidence in the Lord. How do we prepare for, for the battles against the giant in our lives? Let's see what David did. Okay, David followed God's directions and gathered the stones. David knew his enemy, who his enemy was. He had a clear vision of God's plan. He knew what God wanted. He listened. He had no fear. We would probably sh shake. I mean, I'd probably be in the back of the line saying, "No, you go." <laughs> he had no fear. He went at the enemy head on. David fought his giant, and he gained a victory. Amen. All right, here's 10 quick, quick steps to defeat your giant, especially fear. Remember, God allows giants in our lives to demonstrate our loyalty to him. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Begin with faith in God. David said, 
This is the day the Lord will deliver. He is going to deliver him to him. Be confident in God's power. David said, and listen to this one, for the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Remember that called the battle is the Lord's. Amen. Vision. Know what you, what you will do. David said, I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds. He already knew he beat him. He already knew that. There's, there's no doubt about it. A track record. Victories built on victories. Now this little guy, he killed a bear and a lion. That tells you some God somewhere with him. Stay within your strengths. David didn't take Saul's armor. He didn't approve of it. He didn't know anything about it. It would weigh him down. He wouldn't even be able to pick his arms up. I mean, a little bitty guy, 150 pounds of weight, that's a lot. And you look at, you look at uh, he, he wouldn't be able to go. He wouldn't be able to walk. And then you had Goliath was so big. I mean, 250-some pounds of, of weight on him is like Velcroing two Davids to him. And then he's got to move. Be direct. Now, here it is. David ran. He ran to the battle. Not away. He knew where the battle was and he went to it. Face for us. Be thorough. Now a lot of y'all might not like to hear this, but he cut the giant's head off. He didn't, he didn't kill him with the stone. He knocked him out. He killed him by cutting his head off. That's what the Lord wanted him to do. That's what he did. Tell others the Philistine's head was still in his hand when he reported to Saul. Use your victories against other sins. David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. It was no hearsay. He brought it there. This little guy brought it there. When we put our faith in God, he will always allow us to win. But only if we fight the battles he asked for us to fight. In conclusion, I'd like to read you the words to an old hymn that sums up what we've been talking about today. And a lot of y'all probably know it because I'm going to get y'all to do something at the end of it. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still with all we trust and obey. Then in fellowship, sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way, what he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Amen. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. Does everybody know that chorus? Okay, we're going to sing that. Everybody. Everybody. And, and I want you to sing it loud because I want Colton to hear that he is trusted and obey God, that's why he's got his Goliath. And the Lord's at it. And he's got his stone Amen. to take care of Goliath. And I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to tell him, here you go. Don't throw it at nobody. <laughs> just, just hang on to it. Y'all ready? Yeah. Trust and obey. For oh, there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Man, you can't, you can't beat those old hymns. God did not simply give or hand over the victories to the Israelites. He required them to win or do the work to get the victory. And all he expects is the same from us. And remember, when we do what we can, God will do what we can't. So, I mean, if you got, you got problems in your life, 
God's there. He's going to help you. He will help you. All you got to do is trust Him. When, I mean, wouldn't you want to? Wouldn't you want that? I mean, all it takes is you come to Jesus, and say, "Look, I know I'm a sinner. I want I want to be with you. I want you to be my David, and take care of me and slew these giants in our life." 